we often learn too late that priorities are important. What's the most important commodity in your life? It's time. You can never get back any time you wasted or spent inappropriately. A lot of us beat ourselves up when we think about all the time we've wasted in our past. That's okay, as long as we've learned our lesson. It's a shame this isn't something that's taught early in life. Your parents might have told you as a child that you need to have a list of priorities. That probably didn't mean anything to you at the time. You were young and had your whole life ahead of you. Then you blinked your eyes and winded up far removed from your childhood. You got several decades behind you as an adult. You regret not having paid attention to priorities over the years. You know that what you prioritize highly gets the most of your attention. This happens subconsciously and consciously. The person who prioritizes becoming wealthy above all other things is very likely to achieve that goal. His relationships may suffer unless he places them high up on his list of priorities as well. Have you written down your priorities? You don't have to do this with pen and paper. You can use your smartphone or your computer. That way you'll always have your list of priorities available. By the way, this should be something you review constantly. You're an entirely different person now than when you were younger. You're going to be a different person in a few years in so many ways. This means you should constantly check your list of priorities and see if you've got them in the right order. At the top of your list, you want to jot down the things that are most important to you. When you first do this, don't worry about misspelling words or making complete sentences. You just want to get your thoughts down on paper. Prioritize the top 10 things in your life. These are your values. They are the things that are important to you. When you're finished, rank them. Put your most important value or goal at the top. Look at the list. What do you think? What are you going to spend the most time on? Can you make a plan to spend more time and effort on priority number one than number five? That's what you should do because your highest priority is the thing in life that's of the utmost importance to you. Repeat the process for the next few days. Do the same thing again tomorrow. You want to do this because things may pop into your head that you didn't think about. You might think that it won't happen with goals or values that are super important to you. Believe us when we say that it does. When you go through this exercise for three or four days in a row, you'll have a very clear picture of the things that are important in your life. Then you can move forward with more focus and productivity. It's a shame this isn't taught to children. When it is taught, Young people are so busy with so many things that they might forget the lesson. No matter where you are in life right now, take this to heart. Your actions create your reality, and priorities can help you decide what receives the most action in your life. The imagined results of failure are always worse than reality. I bet the following scenario has happened to you. You had some big event on the horizon. Maybe you had to give a presentation at work. Perhaps you were trying to build up the courage to ask someone out on a date. Whatever it was you were preparing for, it was huge in your mind. The possible rewards were amazing. If everything went perfectly, you were going to feel like life is beautiful. Unfortunately, if you're like most people, your brain started to paint a different picture. Suddenly, you saw so many different ways that you could fail. Every time you thought about the possibility of failure, the results looked worse and worse. This is what our brains do to us from time to time. It's a self-defeating practice, but one that's unfortunately common. Let's get back to our example. Imagine that you gave that presentation at work, and it didn't go very well. You asked out the man or woman of your dreams and were turned down cold. Were the actual results of failure as bad as you thought they would be? In almost every case, your overblown imagination created disastrous results that were never realized. Stop beating yourself up over something that hasn't happened yet. The results of failure in your life are almost never going to be as bad as your imagination makes them out to be. Maybe this is a part of some ancient survival instinct. You convince yourself not to take some action because you're afraid it'll harm your existence mentally, emotionally, or perhaps physically. It's a shame this happens and that so many people go through this. You can keep yourself from enjoying so many amazing experiences if you let this thought process keep you from taking action. Look at your own life. Think about some big failure you obsessed about before it happened. It might be that you created the failure by thinking about it all the time. Whatever the case, the results of that failure were probably nowhere as damaging or impactful as your imagination led you to believe they would be. This is something everyone should be taught at a very early age. Our internal conversations can sometimes paint a dismal picture of possible events. Why not choose to imagine amazing positive results instead? 
When you start telling yourself negative stories internally, stop. You can even say the word stop out loud. You're always in control of your thoughts. Choose to think of positive rather than negative potential outcomes, and you're more likely to enjoy success than failure. The younger you should have been taught better habits. Some people believe they're unlucky. They think that life has simply decided to keep them from being happy. They believe the universe knows full well who and where they are and is constantly following them around causing bad things to happen. These people believe no goodness will shine on their lives. You hear them say things like, everyone in my family has always been broke. We're not meant to have money. If it's not money they feel that's been disallowed in their lives, it's something else. They're just not intended to have joy, or a good relationship, or whatever else they desire. It doesn't matter how hard the person with this mindset works. He's just not going to get the things he deserves from life. Habits define you, not chance. Blaming the universe or fate or some greater being for what's missing in your life is pointless. This is nothing but an excuse for not taking action and making changes. A person with this mindset can simply give up. After all, no matter what he does, he's never going to get everything he wants. It simply isn't going to happen. In his mind, he could have all the tools and resources and skills necessary to achieve his greatest desires, but it'll simply never happen. So why waste any time trying? Yes, it's true that luck can deal you a devastating blow or a wonderful reward. If you go through life depending on good luck to give you everything you need, you're probably going to have a lot of unhappiness. Don't look at life like that. You're cheating yourself out of so many wonderful experiences. The habits you practice every day are going to create your reality. Your habits define your experiences. Depending on fate to decide to treat you nicely means you have no control over the life you live. You can play the lottery or create wealth yourself. Imagine that one of your major goals is incredible wealth. You can achieve that by picking the correct lottery numbers. Unfortunately, the odds are stacked against you. In the biggest lotteries, you have one chance in several hundred million of winning. You can alternatively decide to practice daily habits that create wealth. When you choose this path, you control your financial picture. You learn the things you need to every day to build wealth over time. That's just one example of how your habits create your reality. You can practice the habit of whining and moaning about your life, and all you're going to get in the future is more whining and moaning. You can also take control and start practicing daily habits that create the reality you desire, because it's your habits that define you. We should be taught when we're young that money won't solve all our problems. Think about a time in your life when you needed more money. You might not have been totally broke, but you weren't exactly living the high life. You could have struggled every month just to pay your bills. This is a situation a lot of people have experienced. It's times like these when you think, if only I had more money, if I made X more dollars every month, life would be so much easier. Would that really be true? Can more money instantly make your life so much better? If you're honest with yourself, you know that money is not some magic cure-all. You can't throw money at any problem and watch the problem disappear. Sometimes when you get more money, it's never enough. You've probably heard stories about millionaires and billionaires who are difficult to be around. They're controlling, manipulative, and no one likes working for them. This isn't true of all wealthy people, of course. In some cases, though, people with more money than they ever need are just terrible human beings. When they reach some impressive monetary level in their lives, they celebrate. Then, not much later, they want more. There's never enough money. They could have all the money in the world, and they'd probably start looking at other planets to see if there was any money there. This is because money doesn't fix emotional issues. If you've been both broke and wealthy, you probably prefer the latter situation. You can do so much good when you have excess wealth. You can help the people you love. You can assist charities and organizations that do good around the world. What you can't do with money is change emotional and mental issues that you need to address some other way. This is why so many wealthy people are never happy. They think getting to that next rung on the financial ladder will finally give them all the happiness and fulfillment they're looking for. But since money can't cure problems of the soul, they're constantly unhappy. Money is a commodity, not a magic pill. Money is just a thing. It used to be that money was only physical in nature, but now money can be digital. You transfer numbers out of your bank account into the account of someone else, 
and no physical money changes hands. Whether you slide your plastic or pull out some cash to purchase something, money is just a commodity. It makes things happen. You can pay your mortgage and your utility bill with it. Money's great for buying gifts for your loved ones. So there are definitely reasons why you'd want to have enough money to live your life comfortably and not stress over your finances. Just remember that money is not a magic pill. Your doctor can't prescribe you more money to fix some physical health problem. Money won't make you a social superstar if you're a loner who's always looking at life negatively. This is something that should be learned earlier in life than it often is. Develop money skills. Learn to budget and treat your finances with respect. You should also stop expecting money to cure every problem in your life, because it can't. Start practicing gratitude when you're young. Practicing gratitude can be so rewarding. It's amazing how the moment you take time to be grateful for all you have, you're given more to be grateful for. This is something that should be taught early on in a person's life. You're never too young to appreciate all your blessings. This is often a lesson we learn too late. We take things for granted. We assume they're always going to be there. Then one day we wake up and the love of our life is gone. Maybe we lose a family member. The company you work for goes bankrupt, and while you made a lot of money over the years, you didn't appreciate your income and take care of your finances. These are just a few situations where conscious gratitude can teach you a valuable lesson. So many of us believe we need more than we have. Society always has us chasing the brass ring. That's fine if you're a driven person. It's not fine when you're so focused on getting something more that you're not grateful for what you've already got. A practice of daily gratitude makes you healthier. This is really amazing. There are a lot of studies which show practicing gratitude is a powerful stress reliever. The people that set aside time to think about all their blessings every day have significantly less stress and anxiety in their lives. Since stress is both a symptom and cause of so many serious health problems, practicing gratitude will instantly make you healthier. It'll extend your lifespan. This is something we need to teach our children when they're very young. It leads to compassion, because when you realize you have so many things to be grateful for, you see others that aren't as fortunate as you. You develop compassion and sympathy for those people. You become more of a caring and kind person that offers assistance to people who need a helping hand. You don't know what you've got until it's gone. That's an old saying that's so apropos here. It speaks about the grief and emotional pain you experience when you lose something great in your life. It's a sad but unfortunately true statement for a lot of people. It means that you never fully appreciate the great things in your life until they're gone. Taking time to practice gratitude daily can keep this from happening to you. Hug your parents. They're the only ones you'll ever have. They may not have been perfect, but they were there for you. Tell your friends that you're so lucky to have them in your life. Respect your finances. You could lose your job in the blink of an eye. Start taking care of your possessions. Practice gratitude by having regular maintenance done on your vehicles. Be extremely grateful for your health and well-being. Even if you suffer physically or mentally in some way, things can always be so much worse. If you have some young people in your life, teach them this lesson. Gratitude makes you feel so much better about yourself. It's a stress reliever, and it creates an emotionally healthy person. Start practicing gratitude regularly, and you'll find the universe gives you even more to be grateful for.